Round three, fight! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 137 of the Sun and Moon anime titled Guzma, the Undefeated Emperor, just dropped, and we are finally at the end game. In this episode, we will get the conclusion to Ash vs. Guzma. Who won? How did they win? Let's find out. The battle continues between Ash and Guzma, and the episode starts with a little bit of back and forth between Golisopod and Torcat. Torcat gets poisoned during the battle, but still manages to hit Golisopod with a fire fang before ultimately going down to a throat chop. Ash then brings out his Pikachu and tells Guzma that he isn't going to give up because you can't tell who's going to win a battle until they ultimately do. This infuriates Guzma, and we see that it's because when he was younger, he could never beat Kakui. He eventually got fed up of losing, which is why he decided to denounce the way Kakui and Hala did things and run away. We also find out from Plumeria that the reason these Team Skull Grunts like Guzma so much is because they're also castaways, but they look up to him because he gave them a place to belong. Pikachu and Golisopod go at it at the beginning, and it looks like the battle's gonna go like last time, where Pikachu gets dominated, especially after getting hit by a throat chop. However, after persevering, Pikachu manages to counter Golisopod's attacks and knock him off his feet with Iron Tail before getting a direct hit with a Thunderbolt doing some massive damage. It's here that we find out the reason Guzma is undefeated is because he just refuses to take part in battle in opponents that could be stronger than him. Ash then goes for a Gigavolt Havoc, which Golisopod gets ready to stand. After being terrified of it himself and seeing Golisopod withstand it and not run away, and he talks to Golisopod, he realizes that he doesn't have to run away from battles just because someone may be stronger. And after he realizes this, the battle really begins. And we see a great back and forth, which ultimately ends with a clash of Iron Tail and Liquidation, where Pikachu comes out on top, which means Ash wins. After the match, he helps out his Golisopod before heading back where Kakui reinvites him to the league for the next time and his grunts and Plumeria, they were moved by his battle enough to continue following him and asking him to help them become better battlers. It ends with him jumping for joy. At the end of the episode, Ash's friends wish him well on the finals before we end the episode seeing a horde of Meltan heading to the stadium. If you want a scene by scene breakdown of this, I put a link in the description where you can read my scene by scene breakdown of this episode. Now, on to the review. Let's start from the beginning. Even though the battle between Torakat and Glycopod was short, I thought it was still pretty good. Something that someone said earlier, which I noticed initially when I watched but I couldn't really understand it until I saw their tweet, was that you noticed that when Guzma was angry, all of his moves were done in slow motion. Not in the actual battle, you know, in the real time time, but in the animation itself, they made sure to emphasize that everything he did looked like slow motion, and this was his inner conflict. However, after he lets go, you can see the battle moving at a faster pace, and that was him letting go. That's a nice touch, and I didn't notice it at first, but after subsequent watches, it makes those scenes mean much more. Let's start with the biggest complaint I saw about this episode, that there was too much backstory. And yes, to a small degree I agree, however, I disagree with the people who say that splitting it up in multiple episodes would have been better. Maybe in other shows, but for a kid's show like Pokemon, you really have to look at it a bit differently. If you start showing sympathy for this character, who's supposed to be the bad guy of the league, then he's an antagonist. He's just a tragic person, and while that works in shows like Naruto, the battles in Pokemon don't last multiple, multiple episodes to give deep backstory and focus on a character. That's just not how they write. Plus, in this situation, it would have felt like the story is dragging since this isn't some crazy life or death battle. It's the story of a person's inner conflict and how they overcome it to become a better person. Like I said, it's a kid's show. The age demographic for Pokemon in Japan is probably between 5 and 13 and they make sure that every episode tries to be self-contained so that people who just jump on the series don't get lost even if they're just watching for the first time ever. With those constraints, I think they did a fantastic job of it. And I recall Pokemon Generations having this exact same plot. Giovanni enjoying battles with Red so much that he changes. And I don't remember anyone complaining then. The music choice is another problem people seem to have with it. And I'm also going to defend this one. People are upset that the main battle between Ash and Guzma used Notebook of the Heart. 
a slower song compared to let's say Type Wild. But the music wasn't there to make the battlefield intense or frenetic. Notice that the music doesn't kick in until after Guzma accepts himself and decides not to give up. The music signifies that he's changing. I'll let the lyrics up and you can read it if you want but you can see that it's a song about letting go and moving forward and at that time that's exactly what Guzma and Galisopod were doing. I think thematically, it fits really well. Another thing people seem to have a problem with is that they felt that this changed Guzma's character drastically. And I don't know, I don't feel that way at all. He was constantly being pushed by Ash in that direction to be a better person even from the beginning. But even so, he was never a villain. He didn't do anything evil. He was an antagonist and he just didn't understand that there's more to battling than winning and losing. But that isn't something that he changes so drastically that it makes him a different character. He just understands. I don't know. I don't see how that's such a massive difference. If you feel differently, let me know in the comments. Maybe I don't understand something, but I didn't feel that way. And the episode did a good job with this journey and story to where I don't think it felt rushed at all, really. But now let's talk about the animation, which is, I think, fantastic. I think the use of slow motion throughout the battle was really effective. There wasn't a lot of move spamming. Each and every move meant something and it conveyed the intensity and the toughness of the battle. And then finally, when the battle begins, you know, the final final battle, the contrast between the slow motion before and the frenetic pace that the battle takes place later makes a pretty memorable battle. Something I noticed, and it's probably because we haven't seen Gigavolt Havoc in a long time, is that if you pay attention to Ash's face, it goes back to its original Sun and Moon style. If you don't understand what I mean, at the beginning of Sun and Moon, Ash's face looked a lot younger. His facial features were smaller and over time they made it bigger and they got a pretty consistent look of him. But when he does his Z moves, especially the one he's done since the beginning of Sun and Moon, you notice the art style shift because they reuse the animation. I don't have a point with that, it's just something that I noticed. Also, Plumeria in this episode was great like she's always been and our heroes, they were also great because they didn't really talk a lot. Most of the talking in this episode was the inner dialogue done by either Plumeria or Guzma himself and I think that really works well. We don't really need to hear what Ash has to say about anything because this isn't Ash's conflict. It's Guzma's. And Ash is just a catalyst to Guzma's change, something I don't think Ash even realizes he did. Now, Kakui inviting Guzma to the next league? That's something that I can't agree with with the people that said that the change came out of nowhere. Not for Guzma, but just Hala and Kakui. Hala gives him a standing ovation when he was just moaning about him earlier and Kukui invites him to the league even though last time he said he's going to destroy the league. I understand it's a battle shonen and you want to show that a person has been reformed but the shift is so drastic it kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere. But that's a minor thing. I don't think that's enough to really make me change my opinion of the episode being pretty good. The episode is fantastic because it completed a person's journey and it did it well. The battle was good, the choice of music was appropriate, and the storytelling was compelling. I thought it was a good episode, I highly recommend it. Before I talk about the next episode, I just want to say a couple things about the new series that was just announced. I'm looking forward to the series for sure, but I am also a little bit worried. I like the fact that they say that they're going to make the anime for people of all ages and include multiple regions. I think that's good. But they're also changing the logo, which could just be a cosmetic change or they're thinking of rebooting the series. And some tweets from the past where some of the creators of Pokemon have said that it might take time for you to get used to the new anime makes me a bit worried that they might be getting rid of Ash. Now I know a lot of people don't like that Ash has been the same character for 20 years, but He's been a constant in the Pokemon anime for 20 plus years, so if he and Pikachu go, it's going to feel like the show is missing something. And plus, if there's no Ash and Pikachu, there's not going to be Team Rocket, so you're going to lose out on that aspect of the show as well. Losing those things would really suck, but like the people say, it's just something that you got to get used to for the new episode. If that's how they go anyways. Anyways, in the next episode, it looks like Meltan's going to evolve and the battle between Gladion and Ash will begin. Not only that, but it looks like Ash is going to start with his Pikachu, which is interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to that battle. But anyways, that's it for my Pokemon Sun and Moon episode 137 review. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments. Did you like the battle? Did you like the story of the battle? What do you think the episode overall? You can also follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming and that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.